<laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of uh, Revolt Garage. So we're here with my man, Eddie B. Howdy. Boom. All right. And we're going to walk you through, uh, you know, a couple of the projects that we got going on. Um, what are we going to talk about first, Eddie B? Besides my red eyes and not sleeping all night long, because I was up until, what, 3 o'clock working until on this project? 3 o'clock this morning <laughs> working on, on projects so you guys can enjoy our facility. So we got the Hillbilly Deluxe back there, we got electric uh, motorcycle for Bonneville, we have the dock. the dock, the Mustangs back in here for a little while to get some fabrication before final paint. So let's go check it out. All right, let's go. Excuse the mess. It's been busy around here. All right, so we're building a new motor for snow for his car, truck, sorry. Um, the Hillbilly Deluxe. These are just some of the parts that go into our motors. Uh, right behind me here, you'll see our 65 Mustang. We call it the dock because the license plate said PHD 733. I know people are asking, like, why do you call it the doctor? Well, that's why. Um, it's in primer. Hot Dogs Customs has done an amazing job getting this thing back together and getting all the cancer out of it. Uh, the bodywork is pretty much flawless. It's, it's perfect. Um, he does have to do a couple uh, more, more sanding jobs on it, but he wanted us to take the car back at this point so we can do some minor fabrication. Uh, a lot has gone on in the front of the car. This is a 100% one-off custom hood. It's fiberglass and carbon fiber. We actually have the mold of this, uh, so we can make these more and more if anyone wants something ridiculous like this on their car. Um, for the VA guys, you're gonna have some fun trying to get that in there. Um, but for us electric guys, we have plenty of room under the hood. So that's what we built here. Big air scoops, uh, one for each radiator. One cools the motor and inverters, the other cools the batteries. So I wanted to make sure we had plenty of airflow. Plus, these Mustang hoods are, are kind of long and they're, I think they're kind of boring. So Al from Avias Fabrication, myself, kind of sat down and penned this out on the original hood. We wanted something really aggressive looking, something that kind of looks at you and goes, hey, come here, come take a look at me. Most car guys can look at this and go, okay, okay, where's, where's the fan, where's the radiator, where's the fan belts, where's the engine? Because there's no way you could fit a V8 underneath this thing without having to do some, probably you know, pushing it back and do some major modifications. So another eye grabber, plus it does help cool the car. Um, the 67s had a little bit of louver on them. That was my first car growing up in high school. So I kind of like that look. We just want to make that even more ridiculous. I mean, my hands way down here, it's like 16 inches. So really cool look. We'll have the racing stripes going down the middle of it. The car's gonna be painted pearl white. Um, We'll get fully assembled the battery pack here in the next couple of months and get this thing going after it's painted. And we gotta do some minor work for the radiator core supports for this new vent system that we put together on the hood. So you're gonna see a lot more of this car coming up very soon. Hillbilly Deluxe, what's going on All with right. this thing? Well, before we get to the Hillbilly Deluxe, uh, things are really taking off here at Revolt. So if you look right here on the floor, we've got orders coming in nonstop. So these are two motors that we're gonna be prepping here real shortly for uh, the next two uh, customers that are you know, placed orders. So with that being said, let's move over and talk about the Hillbilly Deluxe. All right, now. now. This is the rough build. We wanted something rough and fun. Not, you yeah. know, that's a super show car. This is yeah. gonna be the this Boulevard is Bruiser. To be, this is the Boulevard Bruiser right here. This is meant to be fun. And one of the big things that we wanted to do at Revolt Garage was show you that a working man can build this with common tools that you'd find in a garage. Now, and I mean a garage at home. You could build this, everything that we've done here, you could do at home. Um, you need common tools, welder, um, grinders, you know. So, <clears throat> all right, with that being said, if you want, you can look at the truck and you don't have to focus in on this pretty face. We can show you the goods. So, under the hood, this is where the motor's gonna sit and notice there's a lot of room in here. So we, for with the, the classic V8 and uh, turbo 400 transmission, and we have our electric running gear. And that uh, consequently opens up a lot of room here. One of the big things to notice is that motor is behind the wheels, behind the, the front cross member. And that's by design. So what we're doing is we kind of keep the majority of the weight on this guy between the, the in, inside the wheelbase. Um, up there, notice we got the bare brake booster, uh, the master cylinder. So. While it is, uh, we'll just say, rough in nature, we put the best we could find in it 
you know, best that, you know, my budget can afford. And that's the same thing that a working man would do in his own garage. Now, if you move on to the inside of the truck. We gave him the 3D printed one. Shh, don't tell him that it doesn't work. That's all right. Hey, wait a minute. I thought it would move much faster than this. All right, so we look in here and we got nice seats in here for Sparco and we installed the cage and we, um, with the help of one of our guys over at uh, Warner's Muffler, uh, Jake came over and helped us with the, the cage and then the rest of the welding. I'm gonna tip my hat to Eddie B here because he started off, eh, it was a little rough. <laughs> it was touch and go for a second. We didn't know if he would survive. But you look at some of these welds and we'll stack this up against pretty much anything on the street. So he did a phenomenal job there, so kudos to Eddie B. Now, no Hillbilly Deluxe would be complete without our trusty gun rack. <laughs> complete with the 22 hanging in the window. Hey, Yeah. you never know. Hey, you never know. So it might jack your Hillbilly Deluxe. Hey, it's, my grandpa used to say, it's better to get caught with it than without it. So now we move on to the back of the Hillbilly Deluxe here. All right, so notice all the bracing and the tube work, well, that's compliments of Eddie B. And I, I notched the tubes, but Eddie B welded all this together. Um, he came up with the design for the four link. Um, this thing is solid. Yeah, we ran into a couple of little hiccups that we hadn't anticipated. We got all done and everything was ready to put shock mounts in and we noticed the frame was crooked. So personally, I was like, I don't know if the reward is worth what the effort we're gonna do to straighten that. And Eddie B was like, nah, we can't send it out of the shop looking like this. So we took it upon ourselves to straighten the frame. And now I won't go into all the details, but it was a very technical process to do that. It required a forklift and two guys jumping up and down in certain parts of the van. <laughs> very technical. It was very technical. Anyway, everything I, uh, I, I got back here, we designed in Fusion 360. It's a cool little program, uh, super simple to use. Um, everything we cycled, measured, put it into a CAD program. Um, we had everything laser cut through send, cut, send. It came in, it was kind of like having an erector set. Welding, uh, welded everything together and kind of fit. Um, cycled the suspension again, make sure we had clearances for everything. I just put in these shock, uh, shock brackets yeah, this shock morning. Mounts. So the shock mounts are ready. Um, this is for the coilover. We're gonna put the coils back on it today. Pan hard's ready. Everything is 100% dialed in back here. All we gotta do is put the springs in it and let her sit down on our, on our own weight for the first time. Uh, we're gonna put the bed back on it today. We already have a battery box for it sitting right there on the floor. Um, the rack for that, so that's going in this car. That's also the same exact battery pack we used on the little giant at Bonneville last year. Um, it's a very stout pack. It's got a lot and lot of potential for amp dumpage. So we want to be able to use that on these these Tesla motors to see what we can really pull out of them. So um, that's pretty much where we are with this. We hope to have this car running in the next week or so. We're taking it up to Holly High Voltage this year. Uh, we're going to be running it on the drag strip, and we're going to have some fun. Yep. All right, last project we have going currently, right behind Eddie B, you'll see the Bonneville bike. So this bike ran uh, a few years ago, kind of sat in our buddy's garage for a long while, Kent Ritchie's. Um, it caught fire. It was an electric bike to start with. They had some problems with the batteries. Kent came to me, we kind of talked. One of my guys here, um, Matt Dealey, wants to go and set some records at Bonneville. He did a great job last year. Um, this year he wanted to go faster. He wanted to build his own bike. I said, hold on, I know Kent. Let's put you together with Kent. Kent, let us borrow the bike. We've gone through it. Matt has basically rebuilt this thing from tip to tail. Every bolt, nut, washer, wire has yeah. been completely replaced. Also, we built our own custom battery pack that is sitting right there. Um, okay. That's about how many cells? 456 cells. 456 cells. And these are the same cells we used at Bonneville. Um, we put all these together in parallel last night to basically balance out. This is kind of a crude way to make sure that all the batteries, all these little individual cells are balanced out together. Uh, we did some basic math on this. Each one of these cells we have tested up to 400 amps and there's 400 plus of them. And if you did all the math of how many amps is sitting here, it's about 187,000. Yeah, I'm not making that up. Ridiculous. 187,000 amps. I could touch it and not get shocked, but you drop 
something on this thing, it pretty much vaporized. Like if you threw a wrench at this thing. So pretty dangerous stuff. We're keeping everybody out of the office and out of the shop for the next day or two yeah. while this pack settles down. Um, once it settles down, we'll reconfigure it in the way we need it for the bike to get up to the 480 volts that we need. Uh, we already have a battery box designed by a really good friend, Will. Thanks, Will, for that. Um, we're gonna put this thing back together and also get that bike running for Bonneville this year. So lots of fun stuff coming out of here. We've been very busy. My eyes are red. I barely got any yeah. sleep last night, but hey, it's called racing. This is what you gotta do. This to is get what stuff you done. gotta do. All right. Hey, so well, we want to thank you guys for joining us for another episode of Revo Garage. So take care, and we will see you guys on the racetrack. See you guys later.